if I fart sometimes. <laughs> I was like, why are you mad? Because they're making money, you ain't. That's fucking red flag A through motherfucking Z. Because I, I, did, that. Because I did not hit my step like that. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of After Class of Queens Podcast. We got Jazz up in the building. Say what's, what's up, up? Hey. hey. We got Whammy up in the building. Say what's up, hey. We got Ali up in the building. Say what's up, hey. hey. Listen, so I'm wearing a top that's kind of cut off like this. So if my under boob... Just can y'all look out for me, please? Because I just feel like this under boob. Free the nipple. I really do feel like all it takes is a lot of like cute little tank tops and shirts and then just like three pairs of pants and then you can just have outfits for days. You know what I'm saying? Me. And that's what one of these tops are. Like, I just love it because it's like a cute little it's bandana cute. situation or whatever. But you can play it up and down. It's giving, it's giving right. versatile. It's giving versatile <laughs> and that's how we need to shop. So anyway... <laughs> I just want to apologize. <laughs> Not that, see, now, if this show was live, I feel like y'all would Ooh. be cussing us out they every would week. <laughs> they, would, they would stop coming. Because Ooh. you guys don't understand, we are late every time to every our time. session, and poor Rashad. You know, somebody had commented Rashad on you. They were like, oh, my God, we saw, we saw Rashad for the first time. <laughs> I think it was just your hair, though. I don't think it was his face. But um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how much we love Rashad because we literally come in here, our sound engineer, we literally come in here not knowing what to talk about at any point. So this cute little baggie with all of these cards, if you guys are just listening, just imagine a freaking plastic bag, like something that you would put your snacks in with a whole bunch of cut out little cards of all of these topics. Yeah. Rashad cares about us. <laughs> he be acting like he hate us, but this is real. It's love. This pretend mad. Right. This pretend. Exactly. But he actually loves us. Like, I feel right. like he looks forward to it. We should add him to the group chat so he could see that we really do be trying. We try. Because last time, I don't think last he knows. Time. I don't think he realized that we be trying because then when we come in he's like what the fuck but like in right. the messages it's it be saying like bitch today <laughs> so I, I didn't try and you what do believe. we say what do we say we i'm like rashad better. is gonna be not right. be like oh. rashad is gonna be pissed Who yeah. tell rashad? Who like we, tell we be thinking about you be Add him to the chat. Add him to the chat. I know he needs he to needs join. To see. I am gonna add him to the he chat. He needs to see that it's so not intentional. Last time we tried. Last time we tried yeah, really last hard. Because they were like, okay, let me know when you leave your house. And I was like, all right, who it's left this first? video for me? <laughs> it's Aaliyah filming the street. I was running late, so they went ahead and added this. Some to construction. Make a to teach my ass a motherfucking lesson. See, it's the awareness what? for me. What you you see, she was I trying. <laughs> Rashad. Rashad. Anyway, Friend. shout out to Rashad every freaking time. And we will not record not one podcast without him because he literally makes up the team. <laughs> yes, Shadi. Shadi, Shad. <laughs> <laughs> He's over it. All right, y'all. We're over it. Space. So we He's do fine. not have sis up in the building because she's in Atlanta doing her motherfucking thizzing with her little straight hair. Shout out to you, sis. Right. She's got she little straight hair. <laughs> she's a little still, blowout. She still has her blowout? <laughs> yeah, it's a cute little blowout. Yeah, it's a cute little. I think you live in your life, sis. Wherever you at, whatever you doing, shout out to you. We in love you. We miss you. Have a good Literally. time. What's been going on? What? Huh? What's been going on with y'all? <laughs> Why do we do this every time? Thing? Huh? So did y'all? I, I will say, after following last week's episode, mm -hmm. have you changed your bathroom tendencies and your shower tendencies? <laughs> Why did I think about it the other day? I, was I definitely have changed. Well, you know what I did yesterday. I, <laughs> I went back to my same <laughs> bullshit. Wait, you know I thought about it because I actually mm. was. Get, I grabbed the shower and I was like washing my booty and shit, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh my god you know what i tried i tried the jazz in the shower where i opened it up and did it did work feel? how'd it go i it was too complicated what? it what was too, i just didn't feel like it was doing anything what, what do you mean you it doing? didn't flow through you have to i mean it angle. did but i needed to be shooting at it you need that power not, you know, yeah is your water pressure a little light no i just i feel like it's the it's the um the it's angle. the angle if did i'm you facing, go to like a little corner in the corner <laughs> you can't go straight back oh uh, yeah hit. i went straight back uh, no, no I, you gotta, you gotta bend go over to the corner of the tub 
It's a science. I'm gonna come over. It's a science too. There's a okay, technique. Okay, it's okay. A science. Technique. Yeah, because I'm like, unless I have the detachable thing, I can't be washing my ass the way that I'm not. It's a technique too. You gotta bend over a little bit. I did try the little foldy thing of the toilet paper. It okay. just was a waste of time. Oh, what? It didn't work out. It was a waste of Why? time for me. It didn't work. I just needed to go like. And it's not like I okay, y'all. I don't be crumpling like this. I don't be doing that. It's like if this is the if this is the toilet paper, then I just be like, it's like a steady that. You know what I'm saying? I don't get the little folding. It's just it takes too much energy and too much effort. Wouldn't it be? Easier? I will say I tried. I would like for you guys to try my way now. No, because no. I'm trying. No, to no, I am. <laughs> no, <laughs> it will not be efficient for me. No, nope. It's and not then gonna I get all the cracks. Gauge, then I have to gauge my nails for real, for real. Mm. You. No, you don't. Your your nails are actually protected my way. If I do this my little thing, your like nails this. Are, look how look how your nails are protected. But then when I, don't I go see to nothing. wipe, it's gonna be all nails scraping my booty. <laughs> <laughs> like all is gonna scrape. It's not Ooh. like when it's wrapped, I can like softly. Uh-huh. This is like it's like when the paper comes out, <laughs> it's, it's not gonna even you grab go wipe anything. Like, I did go shorter, so I guess I would like cute. to acknowledge the one comment on the live that we talked about when he said what <laughs> when what? you're in a public restroom and you fart, oh! you ignore it. So I wanted to give that person their Let's credit. Let's propose we, that we did talk about yeah, it in our chat. We did Let's talk about propose. it in the chat. Oh, we did talk yeah, about we it. Said um, it's like, hey, do you? Uh... I definitely ignore it and lift my feet up <laughs> and pretend like no one's in there, so they can't track my feet later on. <laughs> Right. And I go silent. I'm but then they know that. they know it's you. So no. like what I do is I whatever, do what I do and I leave my feet there and I don't say nothing so they Me don't either. know who the fuck was. You it. gotta lift your feet up first. No, because they get they how about if they saw your feet there already? <laughs> Bitch, in order for you to lift your feet up, I feel like you would have had to put that little liner down. I don't be doing that liner shit. Correct. Mm, right. So you Correct. just be sitting on that. No, but hear me, <laughs> if I do sitting fart, on that seat. if I fart sometimes <laughs> Not the press. Yo, she literally lifted herself up off of the chair. Yo. That's a new one. Wow. No, oh, but bitch. like, because you know sometimes when you pee and you don't know that fart's coming. And it just, <laughs> really, he just said, there's no warning. Yeah. <laughs> and they be wet. Oh. Ooh. Okay, I can't. Shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we did enough. We were supposed to talk about something positive today. We were. Let's go. But I will say that I would not say anything. If you fart in the bathroom and it's loud, don't say nothing. Could you be- right. oh, excuse me. There was a- <laughs> this lady was going through it. <laughs> what do you say to that? You good, girl. Right. But right. See, I think that's cute. But the other day I was at the gym. I had to pee, of course. And then this lady next to my saw, she ate something wrong or something because she I was going that. through it. And I was like, girl, you need to go home. You mm. said that? You can't stay here. You said that? No, in my head. Oh, I was like, Because I would have been embarrassed. Because well. my th- honestly, my thing is if you apologize after fighting, then you better apologize for shitting, too. Right. People be going in in the stall, bitch. You right. know what I'm saying? I do at work. I be letting them. <sighs> I would too if it was public, right. public bathroom. But like I said, I would have rather waited till I go home. It was emergencies I mean? only. Mine's always an emergency, um, bitch. It's gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go in like five minutes. You oh, do that coffee, guys. That coffee, bitch. How much creamer do you? What milk is that? Almond. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. cute. It's cute. a triple espresso, though. Mm. Oh, that Blonde shit will get me going. Over ice. Every mm. like thirty minutes, I'll be like, "It is," <laughs> but I need it. Okay, period. <laughs> as you as you can see, and as you can listen, as you can watch, we are very. I feel like in order to be categorize yourself as a queen, you're just not ashamed of the way that you live and and your that tendencies part. and you're just how you just live life. You know what I'm saying? We're very open with it and we're not ashamed. It just it is what it is. I have a question. Yes, it's off topic, but fuck it, I've oh been thinking God. about it. Let's it's go. not. It's no more booty. Uh, oh my God. I mean, no more booty. <laughs> oh my God, I no more booty. No more booty. Um, if you were stranded on an island, would you rather stay with your phone? Or with a knife. If you're stranded there, a for knife, three days. bitch, because my phone is not gonna work. Right, but some people say, "Well, no I can call somebody." No nothing. Easy. What if you nah, you're not gonna get no this? reception on an island, bitch. Let's think a- logically here. Whoa. You are not gonna get reception on an island. I mean, I got cute reception in Costa Rica and Bahamas. For real? Yeah. Nah, I don't know. What you think, Jazz? She said phone. Oh my god! So you could be taking these bomb ass pictures for when you get back, you can fucking because post them and shit. If you say be realistic, 
and this is me being very realistic as much as a knife would be like the smart answer is like well i'm gonna do with that knife like knowing me really like if i see True. an animal am i really gonna all of a sudden be a hunter well no. maybe when you're hungry i'm gonna just be sit that's the thing though i think i would be too scared like i'm gonna just be praying to god i get a little bit of service and i will wander that island until i get a service because lord like i'm gonna just be <laughs> I it like, was i'm not gonna have any skills like there's i promise you i'm gonna get that knife and look dumb as hell like I'm really not gonna be able to utilize it the way it should be utilized. That's true. I'll really like the okay. fuck. You being honest, shit. I never hunt. Okay, fine. Would you okay. rather whatever? Okay, so so let's have this as a group answer. Would we rather either? Ha- Whoa. Oh. Would we rather have the phone or the knife? And we're all I, three of us together. I would be the one with the knife because I will eat fish. No, like no, we only not get all one. of us. No, yeah, we only get one. But let's answer it. Let's answer oh. together because I have something else to propose after that. Okay. Oh, so now it's a three that. thing. And now we're. <laughs> I don't like when you throw shit. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> now no, it's we're a good thing. It's together. a good thing. But you be throwing me off. <laughs> okay, so let's say that we choose a cell phone. Okay. okay. Would we rather have a cell phone now? Now let's go back to if we were by ourselves. Like this is a think for ourselves type situation, not think for the queens, think for okay. ourselves. Would we rather have a cell phone or a person? A person. Right. A person. I think that was so stupid. My bad. A Wait. person. Cause pray to God they better than me, bitch. No, bitch. Cause how about if they're worse than you and now you're both starving and hangry? But at least I feel a little bit better because I'm not alone. Okay, let me throw something else in. Let me make it sweet. A person that you hate. <laughs> what? No. A person that you can't fucking stand. I will be alone. But at least it's um at least it's somebody to you know keep you company. We could talk about our I problems. Yeah. I don't need no company. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't think or would we rather have a cell phone and get that little bit no, of service a person, no. that might not come that probably will not come a person actually. I don't think I hate someone that much to like that would trump the anxiety of being by yourself on a fucking island I could right. be alone she be alone. <laughs> I swear on an island yes I love being alone. Give me the worst person in the world that I do not like I don't even think that I dislike someone that much I already much. know but I cast the name I know me too I was gonna say God. Oh. oh, okay. Y'all. <laughs> Damn, I'm going to text what I want to say in the chat because it's funny. I can't see on here. Yo. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question, Wham. Are you really texting us? Yeah, because I really can't take. It's a dead giveaway. <laughs> okay. So what I want to, what mm-hmm. I was thinking about this past weekend. Ooh. Oh, she really did text oh. us. <laughs> I can't. I'm choking. <laughs> right. You feel me though? I'm reading Jazz's text message. She can't say it and talk. <laughs> you oh, feel me though? Like oh. the way that person be going about things, I feel like maybe they could. Nah, but, I think but her if true we, colors would come out. Nah, if we were to really talk about the person that Jazz is referring to, I just feel like we would think that she would be able to help. No, I don't think so. It's a nah I because what you show. see is not what really be happening in real life. Mm-hmm. We're gonna you know have to social distance, but like they're there. Mm. You know, mm. I think it's all a show. Well, it is, but then that means it won't help out. It will be the worst time of your life. Mm-hmm. What? Okay, so to catch you guys up <clears throat> for the people who are listening and watching, I we are talking about a person that we have encountered all of our lives, mm-hmm. where we just realize that maybe sometimes <clears throat> what is put out. Actually, I think it feel. I really feel like it goes beyond what you know what they put out is like different than how they really are in real life but i feel like it's beyond that because i feel like that's social media period but here's Mm -hmm. the gag when i really think about this person i think that what they do is genuinely a part of them or they wouldn't have that knowledge and, and being able to do so but i think they portray it as if that they walk breathe talk that forever and ever and have no flaws and are just so woke and aware like, I don't know if that makes sense. Like, I think it is a, a an aspect and a little little itty bitty itty bitty 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 piece of that person, but they abuse that part of it mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. try to make it seem like they are just they abuse it to that. maybe to manipulate basically. That's, <laughs> yes, to manipulate to manipulate others. and to reel people in because so that now that you have right. So now you have this whole empire. Now you have this whole you know uh, army. Mm-hmm. 
of people thinking that you are this person because they, you know, they found a like minded person because they would like to think that way. But then you abuse that power, like Jazz said, and you turn out to be something totally different. But we are, but the army is already locked in. Some nonsense. An army of nonsense, baby. So. uh, so that's what we were talking about. And I just I I want to propose for everybody to kind of just think about that for themselves and and just make sure you're not doing that. And right. make sure <laughs> Don't abuse your power. <clears throat> don't yes. abuse it. Yeah. And just I don't no, know. No, but for real, don't abuse your power. That's really all it comes down to. <laughs> like seeing people in vulnerable states and trying to use some sort of something whatever that person does i don't mm-hmm. even know what you want to call it with the spiritualness but taking that and putting it on those people and making it seem like they have now found their ticket out into the light or just something more positive and it, she just like <clears throat> i feel like they hone in on the vulnerable sides of you or at I, least that's I, that's my story the vulnerable parts of me and insecurities that I didn't even think I had were somewhat developed and created from this person and mm-hmm. what they thought. Can that we they turn saw. jazz up just a little bit? Right. What they thought that they saw in me, like, wasn't even something that I was ever even thinking about there or ever go. experienced. Mm-hmm. And then it all of a sudden became something that I was harping on because they're like, no, this is it. This is what you need. This is what you need to be doing. This is what I'm studying. This is what I'm seeing. And I'm like, particularly like very specifically, I remember walking in one day and this person was like, I don't think you love yourself. <gasps> and then from that moment on, it became something that I just completely questioned. That had never been anything that I had ever in my life, like, questioned. Because I have always been <clears throat> accused of living in my own world and just, you know, how I am now. Right. Like, living in fucking Jasmine land, having the best time of my life. So never was it ever you don't love yourself. It was always, like, you really love yourself. Right. You are into yourself, which I didn't think was a bad thing because I had balance. But then it turned into super confidence and like trusting and loving myself to doubting my entire existence. It's because she put her insecurities on you. So that's a lot of people. Actually, they have a lot of power, but they're actually very insecure. So what they do is they put Mm -hmm. what they have in their head on people so they don't have to deal with it. And then they feel like they're helping other people out by telling them oh, you don't love yourself. Oh, my God, why are you second-guessing? Why are you this? Yeah. And in reality, it's themselves. And I was and so vulnerable. Like, right. And, and so young and so and she impressionable. Saw that. She, so took that. she took advantage. And the what matters is now is that you are you see it now. You see people. Yeah. It's a lesson. And when you encounter those type of people, now you know what they are. And, like, not everything is what it seems. Well, let's know? talk about this. I like this. Well, let's it ties talk, into a lot. Uh-huh. Let's talk about this because I feel like a lot, if there's any, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of dancers who watch us and listen to us. And, you know, they're just now starting out their journeys. I feel like we can all just kind of revisit where we were uh-huh. before all of this. I feel like a lot of freaking choreographers specifically that feel like they have made or just have made something of themselves good for them. Yes. I feel like they take advantage of new dancers so much. And you just see it time and time again, like all of these new dancers. I feel so bad for them because I feel like they owe themselves to these choreographers because maybe these choreographers are giving them whatever the guest spots or you know, opportunities or a platform or whatever the situation is. And all those, those, uh, although those things are great, it's like, bitch, you don't owe them your life though. You don't own them now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like specifically for Jazz and I situation, I really felt like I I belonged to somebody. (sighs) And that's like the worst thing to ever feel. But it's also the way things were portrayed. Like, I don't know necessarily how it started in the beginning for you, but my situation had a little bit more hostility. behind it from other circumstances that I was coming into. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You get what yep, I'm yep, okay. yep, yep, cute. Um, so because of that, it became this or that, do or that, do you want a career or do you not? Oh. It was very much so ultimatum wise. And then you need me in order to succeed. And when you hear those words, especially as a beginner, you're like, oh, this person said they're my ticket in. This person said, if I do this, then this. If I don't do this, then that. Mm -hmm. And as someone who, I mean, just to like catch people up, like I never thought I was going to be a heels dancer ever. I was just telling them like I was ballet contemporary. I was going to go to New York, be in a company and randomly walk past Millennium, like the old Millennium. And by accident, while someone was dropping something off and I was like, 
dope. I love this song. And I hadn't danced in seven months because I was just coming off of an injury. And I was like, I think I want to just try it. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, if it's up, then it's stuck. Right. Like, yeah. that's how it was with that person. It only took one other class until that person saw me. Yeah. And then so on and so forth, the story unfolds. But hearing that and you're now stepping into an entire different realm of an industry or something that you're thinking of and then you're hearing like you're gonna mm, believe it right. this is your ticket this is what you need to do mm. take it from me i've been doing this for x y and z you don't know what the fuck is happening you have done no research i when i tell you i don't even know these people's names right you know i right. knew the ailey people i knew the contemporary ballet people the people Same. who i wanted to be but i didn't know these industry people right and it was well you need to do this you need to do this you need to buy this and you're like Damn, this person put me on. Right. This the secret. I'm finna come up. No, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You know, like. <laughs> it is different, isn't it? It is yeah. different. Like that company, that company world, yeah. New York, like ballet. So tech, different. So very technical. Just all of that versus okay. LA industry. Coming to class with your hair down and a full yeah. face on. I was like, what the when fuck nails, is this? Bitch, I didn't have nails. I came to class, dancing. hair in a little bun, some grunginess, ready to sweat. I wore my worst clothes to class. Yeah. My worst. Because I was like, okay, I'm going to work out. I'm going to sweat. Da, no. Da, da, da. Nope. No. You're Here? shopping for class now, bitch. Right. You what are can I wear to class? Exactly. What can I wear in my class video? Exactly. Exactly. That was the, I was looking around like, bitch, I look the fuck dumb. <laughs> right. <laughs> to go. Raggedy as shit. Need to sit my ass I'm sorry, are we down. going to gym class? Right. Like, I used to wear my gym clothes. I did too. Like, Thinking we was really for the one shirt to like I used to no, no. I, I started I used to no and tr I did too but like trying to realize what's happening and then I mean for me I went from like I was known in the contemporary world and it's like where I'm from at least like people knew me and then coming out here you're starting from scratch no one knows you no one's really trying to help you like it's still very shady it's all, everyone for themselves when you, uh, especially absolutely. when you go into these classes so mm -hmm. you're like what's going on and people are like you don't know. Right, right. Oh. It's a select group. You didn't get called out? Right. Well, obviously not, beach. You know what right. I brought to my first heels class? What? <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I wore a chunky booty. I wore what? wedges. <gasps> I wore wedges. <gasps> no! <laughs> I wore I came from, first of all, <laughs> and they were I had having it on one. Facebook, <laughs> one of my first classes. I swear I did, and I don't have it recorded. Whammy! I swear. A I wedge. did not know. I wore character shoes. You know what? <laughs> Get out! Of <laughs> you, know you know what, what character what? shoes look like? Yes. Because yes. I was in choir. Go ahead. Stop. Go ahead. I think the wedge is worse though. When it is. I think it's pretty, both pretty bad. But you know what it was? I, I just booty. came out of contemporary. That was fine. Class. That's fine. No, the way the chunky booty looked though was. I it just, was like a Forever 21 chunky booty. Not, well, I mean, finish your wedge situation. Damn. Finish your wedge situation. You need. I hope you have a really great excuse. I do. I, 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 do, I do. I do. I do. Okay. Okay. So me. I come from Miami, so I used to wear heels. I mean, I still do. But I wore heels everywhere I go. So I literally showed up to Millennium, um, and I had wedges because I just came from, like, a dinner, lunch situation, whatever. I went to go take a contemporary class. I took it, okay? And then I used to be that person that would take, like, five classes a day. So <clears throat> I saw that there was a little heel situation going on right after my contemporary class. <laughs> and I was like, ooh. I want to join. So the, I'm like, is there any spots available? They're like, yeah, you can just sign up right here. And I was like, okay, cool. Whose class was it? Uh, I don't even know. Amy, something like that. Oh, Amy Morgan? Oh, I think so. okay, okay. Uh -huh. um, I think she was subbing or something. So I went and I'm like, shit, I'm going to do it in wedges. And then I'm the only one there. Of Obviously, everybody's of looking at me. Yeah, everybody's looking at me like, girl, who it is? You obviously don't know what you're doing. I'm like, you fucking right. This is my first heel class. So. And so how did it feel in a wedge? It probably shit, felt great. I killed that shit, right. okay? <laughs> I killed that shit. <laughs> Let me tell you, my first heel class in a wedge. Stare at me all you want, but I was confident. Was okay. you in the select group? Was, did you get it, bitch? No, because she didn't <laughs> like that I was wearing a wedge. But I killed that shit. I Damn. know I did. I know I did because she was just there. And then she mentions, she goes ahead and she's like, okay, if you're a beginner. And this Don't is wear your wedges. I know, yeah. She's like, if you're a beginner and this is your first time in a heels class. Let me show you what heels you should bring. That's what and I should have like, done. She could have pulled you aside, though. She had I know. Like, 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 I mean, oh, everybody looked at me when she was explaining this. They were like, damn, she well. Put you aside after you said literally, thank you. I'm literally looking at her like, I know. Damn, wham. 
Damn. Nah, she could have pulled you aside after you said I thank was like, you. That is too much. But you know, I was so used to it coming from a contemporary world that they would literally call you out like right then and there. So I'm True. like, this is normal. True. Mm, that is you know, the, that they would literally industry. just, you're fat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your your biscuits. You need to point them your like, mm-hmm. like what the fuck is that? You're late. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like damn. Yeah, I I, I remember I remember back in the day, all I wanted was an agency because I felt like having an agent was everything. I felt mm. like having an agent meant jobs like right the fuck away. Like you know what I mean? I I thought it was the end all to be all just to have an agent. And I remember I got a shoddy. Was he laughing at me? He was cracking up. Was he cracking up? My wedges? No, he got his headphones in. He don't even listen. Oh, I'm like, I hope it's not anything of us. (laughs) You good? I'm fine. Okay. Okay. Oh, shit. (laughs) Um, and we don't give him no privacy. Right. <laughs> call his ass out every time. Like, every fucking time. Like, what are you laughing Michelle, at? What the fuck is funny? Well, yeah, I want to know. Shit, I want to laugh. He's not, even, he's not even looking at us, bitch. We're all no, up in there. We're, and like, we're in his business. Doing? Right, deep. like, what are you doing? I remember I got called um, squishy. Oh! Oh! <laughs> That was my well, word. We're friends. We just laughed that, at you. No, that's okay. That was my word. They were that. like, no, same. They I were like, that. you are so talented. I mean, oh, she is so talented because I guess um somebody was trying to refer me mm-hmm. to the agency. And this was the email that they received back after they had like inquired about me or whatever. She, they were like, she's talented and she's great. She's just a little squishy. <gasps> So she needs to go. Did you cry? She, I no, I didn't cry. I just felt there was a little bit. There was a little bit of some like uh, god damn. Yeah, there was a little bit of hurt, but I thought it was stupid to be honest with you. True, it is. I thought it was so dumb because I'm it like is. I'm not that bad, beach. Mm-hmm. I oh I just like even in the beginning I I just always mm-hmm. thought that it was for something else for agencies to have these dancers and to make you approved or whatever Mm -hmm. like it's more than just your talent because i was i I was confident about my talent back in the day you know i knew there was always some room for improvement but compared to what i have seen i'm like bitch i can do that 10 times better Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah she may be skinny yeah she has popping out abs and shit or whatever the situation is maybe more flexible but i know what the fuck i can do right right. and i know it could be you know what i mean it could be molded into something great Mm -hmm. so when i received the squishy email i was just like well maybe that's just (laughs) not Maybe that's not the per- not, that's not the agency that I'm supposed to be a part of. Yeah. I just knew my worth. I don't know. I just I don't think I was That's good. That That's really good. Insecure, but I was very insecure when it came to Squishy. the situation. No, when it came to, you know, the mentor that I had looked up to. Yeah. And um I kind of just want to circle back because I really want to guide these new dancers and like what to fucking look for in someone that they're giving their all of their energy to. Every single week, every single fucking week, and the extras, and And the the extra, right, and the extraness. Because at that same instance, see, I feel like my situation is I really thought that we were best friends. Yeah, my mentor and the person that I looked up to or whatever and trained with, like I was so blinded by by friendship, and now that I look at it, I'm like that was so far from fucking friendship because you, Aaliyah, were not in it the way that she was in it. Mm -hmm. And what she defined as friendship is not what you believe to be friendship. And you fucking know that. But you want that ticket. You want to you want to meet new people. You feel like de- you don't want to go and freaking have to start over to prove yourself to another choreographer and become their assistant and be invited to choreography sessions. And de- you don't want to start all the way over. Mm-hmm. You already got here. So let's just stay here and make and make it what it is and kind of like make the best out of it and get and be comfortable and settle. Most importantly, you don't like a through fucking Q. But you know what? You gonna fuck it. But you know what? You're gonna settle. You're gonna settle because you're here. Literally. I literally. Because I agree. Like, a through fucking X. Damn near. Are, are things that you it's don't two like. two things that you like. Right. The classes and the possible perks. That's bitch. it. So you got Y and Z, baby. And there That's was insane. all of it down. The perks were not there, honey. Yeah, I didn't even get the perks. <laughs> I didn't. Right. No, I didn't. Yeah, the perks weren't even there, bitch. Perks. Well, I mean, I was in every single group. But that was your perk. That right. was your perk. Yeah. For that now. was the perk. That was the perk. As a beginner. That was a perk. And I will say I did get some attention just from being behind every single one of the videos. I, mean, I that, will say. I did helps. get I did get the attention. But, but I would have rather 
gotten that because at the end of the day, what was meant for us it is manifesting anyway. Right. And I would have rather. I mean, I'm grateful. I shouldn't say I would have rather not gone through that because I learned a lot. But mm. also, like, did it have to be that extensive? Right. But, but she also deep. went through two people, though. Yeah. Two people that kind of like are in the same world that you thought that you could really count on to help you in your career. And really, it just fucking stepped all over you. For I think real. what made it worse is that the second time around, they were very aware of what I had been through, especially because I think they kind of already heard from you as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know what happened and then you're still choosing to do it. They don't know when they when they are doing it. Probably they're just naturally. Like it was that. it was a lot. It was, it was hmm. so. Sammy, have you ever been through? Have you ever been through something like that? Like, Ooh, can you remember? Sure. Can you remember like a someone that you looked up to? And I don't want to just me. say choreographer, but I mean, I guess in our world, those are the only like. No, but even when I was a kid, it's no, still prominent in contemporary world. Yeah, not even in so karate. your teacher choreographer. Since I was a kid, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to no, just take good. it through. No, you're good. Go ahead. Since I was a kid, I've always been someone who, like, I could pick up on things, and I've always been in an assistant role, like, my mm -hmm. whole life. Like, since mm -hmm. since I started dancing, like, and taking it more seriously, I did my first professional show at 12, like, with a full professional contemporary company, and they allowed kids to come in and train and be apprentices and do it. And then it was on to traveling every weekend and doing conventions, and I've mm -hmm. always been... Same an assistant what was great about that mm. which i needed to learn when i was an adult was i was a kid so they knew not to cross that professional business line it was solely that because these were mm. adults That's once yeah. i became an adult it's almost better that way yeah, correct it is. because it then is. it was great i got the professional aspect yeah now me being the person i am and having the amazing parents that i've had i've always been taught learn how to differentiate between professional and business mm -hmm. so when i got into an adult and started working with these people i knew how to do that I knew how to be kiki. I'm at your house before we do yeah. whatever, but the second we walk into the studio, I'm a it's different boom. person. Right. right. I knew how to do that, but the choreographers that I was doing it did not. Mm -hmm. They mixed the professional and business more than anything, and then it would give mixed signals because at some point you're going off their vibe, which we all know. Right. Like if you're on a job or you're in class, mm -hmm. you know to match the choreographer. You know mm -hmm. how to feed off of them and do whatever you can do to complete the task as efficiently and yeah, as possible. best as you can. Right. So if they're kiki and doing things and you think you do that, and then all of a sudden it's like. You're like, I'm following you. <laughs> so then at some point, I kind of just would shut down. Like, let me just keep it professional. Then, keep you it know, cute. Because, right. right. Keep it cute. Because then at some point, they're not understanding. But then it would just get too much. I didn't know if I could talk to them as a friend or if I needed to talk to them as a boss. Right. So right. when I would get messages on my phone, I'm like, is this you as my friend? Or is this you from yesterday's class? I don't know <laughs> right. which side of you I'm talking to. Right. Please help me out. And then it became the fear factor. Mm -hmm. Because you th at moments when you're talking as friends, then they start threatening with the career and shit. And I'm right. like, I don't understand. Well, then that shouldn't be allowed. You should walk away from that when they start putting business And that's what I friendship. didn't know how to do like, the first round. Right. The second time, I was able to articulate a little bit more, and I had to break mm -hmm. it down to that person. I'm like... You cannot have these expectations of me without me understanding what those expectations are. So please, this is me as the friend communicating. What do you expect from me when we're here? And what do you expect from me when you're here so we can meet them? Because you over here lashing out doing X, Y, and Z and don't make no goddamn sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. What, do, what are you looking for? Because when I walk into the room and I maybe I've been told standoffish or I have a bitch face, I'm assisting you. Mm. This is also still work for me. I'm still a student. Just because I'm assisting you doesn't mean I've stopped training. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm not Period. going. Period. That person thought that I was going into class just to help that person. And he'd be like, the girls think you're so mean and da 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 da. Like, uh, I still got to take class and do something for me. Like, after class, right. if you talk to me, we could kiki. But right. in the meantime, I'm not worried about you. Yeah, let me I'm take care of my business because you about to call me out anyway to fucking right. demonstrate and do this motherfucking and yell solo. At me. And yell at me in the in front of the whole class. So, of course, I'm on fucking edge. And then afterwards, we can have a great time. But I don't know what the fuck you want from me. I'm miserable. I'm stressed out. Like, I'm crying before class because I don't know which version of you I'm going to get. And you don't even know how to articulate what it is that you want from me. Mm. And it's just toxic That's not healthy. and hostile. Yeah. Like, what? Like, what is the point? of this i don't even want to i'm not that. even learning now at this point because i'm walking in like on eggshells yeah yeah and that's why i was saying like i don't have those videos because i look so awkward because you can just see literally see the oh. fear in my eyes like like you could see my eyes lose camera to look, to at, look at the side to <gasps> see i think i have them in my archives but you could see me lose to see if they're like smiling and i would read their body language and that person would be like this mm. Like, damn, did I not hit the step? Like, I don't even want to finish. I don't even want to complete solo. That was right. the only difference. I went through that too, but I didn't. I used to do that when I looked to the side and would 
look for approval from who I looked up to and like was mentoring me. But then as I moved on, I noticed that when I hit steps, I hit steps first, uh, worried if I looked good and I knew the choreo and whatever. And then I would look and see like, all right, you good? You happy with that performance? Well, that's why I hate it too. The fact that you got us like, how was that? Right. Yeah, I hate that. How was it this time? I hate that. So then you just, obviously I got out of that shit because damn. But I will say it's not only in the dance industry. It's anything like competitive. If you're going to compete for something, literally in a dance industry, acting, anything, you are going to encounter and still encounter these people. Don't be like, oh, they don't exist anymore. We're in 2021. I just think, yeah, it's probably just mentors, yeah, yeah. period. Yeah. Like the idea of, you know, whoever you're quote unquote under, or whoever you're training under or whatever it is, like you can always encounter the people well, that we're talking about. You know what exists now? It didn't exist back then. I don't know if you could relate. But when, let's say when I was in karate, before I ever danced, I didn't dance till like I was like 16, actually. So oh, wow. I was a late bloomer. When I was in karate, uh, they didn't allow you to go train in other dojos, <sighs> and no, 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 they no, did that in da- no, they did that in dance too. But I was gonna get there. They didn't allow you to go to another person's dojo, which is a studio, mm-hmm. and um, go train with that master and go uh, learn new things and go do other styles because you're in black, a uh, black belt only in Taekwondo. But guess what? I didn't give a fuck. I did uh Genshi, which is like a Japanese style, and then Taekwondo as well. So I. Got my black belt in Taekwondo, and then I started talking to my coach. We were pretty much friends. There was three masters, right? So three of them. One was, like, this old, like, grumpy-ass bitch that just wanted to belittle all of us, and I was like, no. Then another one, he was, like, my friend. He was pretty cool, but I outgrew him, of course. And then another one that was more, like, I looked at at him as a dad mm-hmm. kind of thing like i didn't step on no one's toes i didn't really like put my friendship on him like that but i he would treat me like a daughter type thing mm-hmm. so um eventually when i grew out of that shit i went to another uh, dojo and i started competing in bigger competitions this my studio where i started didn't compete what is called pan am or something like uh, yeah, nasca, heard of that. Yeah. nasca which is bigger than the, the smaller competitions like the little local ones mm-hmm. and that's all that studio did and i was like i want to grow i want to be creative i want to look crazy i want to flip i want to do all that and then one of the ones i was friend with mr azani i still love him to this day he's pretty cool he taught me all the extreme shits and all that Uh, extreme forms which is where you flip and you have weapons and all that stuff with music so it's kind of like dancing but a little more extra Mm -hmm. and i finally started competing in nasca and that's where i was like yeah i'm being challenged or whatever and all that but long story short i merged into dance after high school which was actually i started at 17 years old not 16 Mm. Damn. Uh, mm -hmm, uh Um, I started and I started in a contemporary studio. They're like, oh, my God, we love you. You should come join whatever. Little did I know, bitch. They're ready to just call me out the whole fucking time because I was brand new. And all they did was call me out. But in a way, I kind of call you out like, hey, show this like we love this or call you out like, bitch, you doing this wrong. Bitch, you doing this wrong. Like, bitch, you look wrong. Mm -hmm. You are wrong (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) type shit. And but it kind of you know what? I don't regret being in there because it really taught me discipline like mm-hmm. in a way it's so fucked up but i have discipline because of that and it made you, you know, stronger it did i became stronger thick made, ass skin thick yeah. ass skin still to this day it's fucking rude yeah yeah so i will say something back but it's like hey you don't gotta disrespect me like that yeah um <laughs> and you're not gonna let it get so far right. in you to where it's gonna fuck up your day i'm like bitch do you see yourself right now mm-hmm. you gotta don't talk about me you yeah know what I'm i think yeah. a lot is when mentors right. abuse or when mentors aren't ready to be mentors. Mm-hmm. Like you have mentors who either are living vicariously through you because their career didn't take off. So now they're just like, fuck it, I'll be a teacher and mentor because whether an injury or something happened and then they're kind of aggressive mm-hmm. and angry because mm-hmm. they're seeing people flourish more than they did. And they're, it's that bitterness. Like you have potential, but don't surpass what I was able to do. And then you're like, well, what the That's fuck? That's a big right. Cause the second you get to a place. Right the fuck. The second you reach the potential that they saw, they're ready to (sighs) get jealous and talk shit, and then they don't want to 
support you or whatever that's it is what it, and tear that's you down. What the fuck it is. That's You're what not ready to mentor. I think okay, so what does it mean to be a mentor? And I feel like just just creatively, like I feel like there's no right or wrong, but just anybody out there who, you know, just just food for thought. Being a mentor and I feel like being a teacher, being a choreographer, being a master or whatever is not only mastering whatever your craft is, nope. whether it be karate, whether it be dance, whether it be ballet, whether it be fucking art, any any of that shit. It's also being confident with where you are and when you're ready to pass down that information to other people. Yes, mm-hmm. you have to you have to go about it in the right way to where you really want, want to, to give. you really want to give and you really want the best for whoever you're passing down your teachings to mm-hmm. not not you know like you can only get to this level or you can only get to that level or i'm always going to be the master like you have to ugh, it just you know what's it's funny? a lot of it's a lot of a, a mental situation touching up on that i remember a while ago i was on a show right and there were these OGs. I'm not going to mention any names, but there are these OGs. There was a group of them, and it's like people you look up to. You know, it's normally the people that you fucking look up to, damn it. Right. But um, mm-hmm. not all of us. Not all of us. Okay. <laughs> uh, but there was a group, and uh, they were talking about media and, like, how media has given opportunities to a lot of people. And not people that have danced with X, Y, and Z. Let's say, like, before it used to be like, oh, my God, your resume, if you don't uh, dance with X, Y, and Z, you're not booked. No, mm-hmm. you can book your own shit. You can go book mm-hmm. off of media. You can make money and, and still be a great dancer of your own and whatever. They were so petty. They were so petty. They're like, I just, I'm so over this, like, all TikTokers, all Instagrammers getting all our jobs, and I'm like, then do something about it. Yeah, Period. I was like, why are you mad? Because they're making money you ain't? Or yeah. I'm like, you're here on a show talking shit about people that are also booking. There's jobs for everybody. And here you're being petty about people that are like. And they weren't even older people. They were talking about like 15-year-olds, 19-year-olds. And these people are like 30 years old plus. And I'm like, why are you so petty? Because they're being successful at a young age. Like, damn. Well, they're not ready to be in a mentor position. Like, they may have like gotten that title because they have the following and people look up to them and maybe they're teaching but you need to be for lack of better words complacent not complacent but just satisfied with what you've already done in order to be selfless like I think people like us I'm not saying we're not capable of being mentors but we're still on the climb Mm -hmm. to fully step back right like to where like I could mentor you from a zoom call Mm -hmm. because I've done all that I want to do you could still drop gems you could still do what you need to do but like I think of like mentor, mentor, mentors that I've had in my life, not just teachers. They have done it all to where they're happy to sit at home and yeah. give their knowledge. They're happy to see you unlock things that they weren't able to unlock because it brings them joy. Whereas yeah. some people, if you're still on the climb, then maybe you don't need to be a full fledged mentor. But if you have that balance, then you have that balance. Or or just being a mentor, being a mentor, being a mentor is like knowing that you can you still have learning to do you don't know That's it true. all right, right. you can learn from about your that. students <laughs> you yeah. can learn from your students and you can welcome any information that they want to propose to you to help you bitch right but you're unless open you're to just, that. yeah unless, you're open to that that's right, the yeah, best part about yeah, it you're being aware open to it you know what i'm saying and just i feel like I know. I just feel like any creative person would just know that there's just no ceiling. There's always something that you can do. There's always something that you can grow to. Now, I mean, if you're ready to go on a hiatus where you're like, I'm perfectly fine sitting at home. I know none of us are going to be okay oh. with sitting at home. No. No. I know none of us are going to stop with at wherever we are. I don't care how much money. I don't care how what's on our resume, any of that. We're not going to be okay with it. We're always finding the new. We're always finding the better us. We're always unlocking certain things you know what i mean and most of the time we can find that through through our students who is growing up in a time that we have passed you know what i'm saying like the dance industry is now completely different they are learning things now that we're never going to see because you know we're in our own point but by the time they come to us for the information for the new songs, for the new challenges, for the new apps, for the new, like, all of that shit, we need to be open to hearing it. Yeah. Because it's only going to make us better. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's why the old choreographers and our old mentors are mad at 
like our generation and all of that because they can't they don't understand it they can't get with can't the get times with that we're in they didn't grow up with and their they're voices not open being like you said they're not open they're not open to going back to that because mm-hmm. it's like oh it's only a young thing or da 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 it's like it's the thing now they're used to, to be it seen. being their it's way or the, the highway right like yes. old older it's choreographers always changing always 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 changing we got to change with it yeah, older they choreographers and mentors open. are used to like when they were assistant roles or the student roles, you shut the fuck up and you listen because it's just the choreographer. And now it's like how you say you're learning from your students. It's more collaborative in a sense, if you want to look yes. at it that way. Right. And they're, yeah. they're confused like you don't speak. But you know you're what? my mentee. Like I'm talking about like old like I look at like how no, I yeah. grew up to my choreographers were like, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah, you came to me. Yeah, I teach you. They're very hard on you. They're very aggressive. Tough love was a thing. Like I respond more to hostility than I do to the good job you're doing. Great. Mm-hmm. Like I was threatened. Like mm-hmm. backstage, it was like you fuck up and you're being replaced. You better not let her outscore you on your solo. Right. Mm-hmm. Ninety nine and above. Like damn, I can miss one point. Mm-hmm. Like you know, does that like, not mean? But does that not mean you weren't allowed to ask questions? I was allowed to ask. Questions, you know what I'm saying? But I like also... not have a voice. That's how I felt. I felt like I didn't have a voice. Like mm-hmm. none of what I had to say. None of the questions. None of the things that I wondered, none of the thing, none of the things that I wanted to know was irrelevant. That's what I thought. It wasn't necessarily that it was irrelevant for me, but it was also like, if I ask the question, I don't get to question the answer. Right. Okay. That's okay. Ex- that's all it was. Like you asked, this is what it is. So do it. And if you don't do it, then now you're gonna be in trouble or whatever it is. You're conditioning or you're being yelled at. You get your spot taken. Yeah. No away. explanation. But Nothing that, at all. That no, gives I said you what pressure. I said. That gives you pressure. It lit though. a fire under my ass. For yeah. Sure. That's what I'm saying. Like that in a class. There has to be a boundary, though. I think that's the only thing I agree with. Boundaries. You know, if you don't set a boundary, people will walk all over you. People will be rude. People, you know, yeah. you have to set a boundary. And you're going to come across rude, mean, host- hostile to somebody in a few select group. But outside of the classroom, once you're done with the training and the hard work and all the, okay, you got to get this shit together and figure it out kind of thing. Outside of the class is where... I speak from because where um, I was in that job and I heard all these OGs talking, I meant like, I can't believe that you're still like stuck on this generation of yours where you can learn so much more, like you said, and you can keep going and you're outside of a fucking classroom. You're outside of a job. You don't have to be so hostile about your life, about everybody's life. This is a job. Okay, go do your job. This is your class. You want to have it this way. You want to train this way. You want discipline that way. Fine. But don't fucking shame people. Don't go up to people and say, oh, uh, I don't think you love yourself. Like, what the fuck? That's not part of my class, bitch. That's still funny. You know what I got? Right. You know what I got? This must be your first life. Oh, this must be this this must be your first life. And I've been here before, so I'm here to tell you. Yeah, I've been here. (laughs) Not your first life. Now we got the same thing because, yes, I can tell you're a newcomer in this earth and your soul is still very fresh. Ew. This is your first time going laughed. through this. I would have yeah. laughed. I would have laughed. I was offered that to go to one of that one of those sessions to learn about my souls and shit. And I was like, I don't want to do that. At learn all. about your soul. Oh, I love my soul. Thank you very like, much. Like learn I'm about okay. it and understand. The like, only way that the only the only way I can fucking learn about my soul is through me being by right. myself. Not what you trying to tell me about my soul and what you thought you felt. Right. Yo. So what can we say? What can we say to these new? to these new dancers or just people who are kind of like going through that. They're very much in the beginning of their careers. They're very much in the beginning of their craft and they're still trying. They're st- they still need guidance because we're not trying. We're not saying like, oh, now just scrap all mentors. Do no. it by yourself. Mm, you can't trust all. anybody. Da, 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 da. Like it's mm. always going to be bad. It's mm. not that you always need help. You always need guidance. But the right the healthy guidance, the healthy teachers, the people who are really there for you, like you mm-hmm. said, selflessly, unconditionally. <coughs> you know what I mean? That's who you need to gravitate to. That's who you need to be with. That's who you need to give your energy to. So what can we say to these new people, period, whatever whatever field that they're in, oh, wow. to kind of just watch out for these fucking Monsters. vultures, bitch, yeah. these energy vultures, because there's a lot of them. I think... You should look for mentors. Of course, you want guidance. Look for guidance. But you need to uh, see where you can find if they're being toxic. How do you... uh, Look out for those red flags, bitch. What are the red flags? Okay, when you do something really good and you feel good about it, let's say you performed well in a group, okay? Small (coughs) example. When you perform well in a group and you're like, damn, I killed it. And maybe you had like some... uh, 
notes or something maybe you did something wrong but you felt good overall and you're happy about it and then they're here getting mad about you being somewhere or going somewhere from their class and um getting a job and moving on from their life and you could still stay in touch but if they're mad that you're staying in touch while you're growing that is not your mentor. Yeah. They are not happy yeah. for you. Yeah. That is not Getting a mentor. mad for growing, period. Right. Getting so, mad for growing, period. period. That is that's it. it. So it, That's fucking yes. red flag number one. That's probably red number flag one. A through motherfucking Z. Period. Yeah. If your mentor is giving you shit for being somewhere else because, that, because being somewhere else is going to benefit you yes. to any type of capacity, that's fucking red flag A through motherfucking Z. <coughs> A through Z. Oh, you're choking. <laughs> she's like, period. period. That, she's like, I remember, yeah, that I remember, I remember what that felt like. <laughs> Getting to my gag reflexes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say... Oh, oh sorry, train of thought. I was choking so goddamn <laughs> She survived. Uh, don't think that that one mentor is going to offer you everything and that's your ticket in. Like, you don't have to believe everything you're saying everything that they're saying like you got to come back to me i need to get my thoughts their together. journey their journey is yeah no no i see what she's saying mm -hmm. i see what she's saying i feel like red another red flag is oh to not train with any other people it's all under that umbrella like it's not to not like you can only get all answers from me they're the only Don't, ones who have the answer they're it's the, the only ultimatum without them you're going to fail because your journey I found it. is your journey if you walk away from them and it mm -hmm. feels wrong be okay with walking away it took me so long yes it took us it both, took, it yes. took us both so, so long. long to walk away but from then when our we people. did Oh, bitch. Yes. Yes. I had to yell back just as much because I felt because no, you for real, felt that right? That feeling of that was the best decision so we've ever made. Small and so insignificant big. and in irrelevant. Like once you start to doubt yourself or start your instincts are so strong. You're going into something that you love, and if someone's taking away that fucking love for it, like that's not tough love. That's right. not criticism. Like. I was questioning my existence, bitch. Like, do I love myself? That was catering into my day-to-day -day life. Like, get the fuck out. If you are dreading it, Leave. you don't need that because you have a passion and you have uh, something behind you. You dread. will succeed without them. You can do it on your own. I think dread. that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Is so that no trusting limits. that you can do it even without a mentor. Mm. You don't have to go in and think you need a mentor. It might take a little bit longer. And that's the might take okay. a little bit longer. It might take a little longer to find the answers. You might have to dig a little deeper. But that was your timing. But that's that how was you your needed time. to learn it. That, and that's how you needed to learn it. Because I didn't even yeah. learn the lessons till after I left them. Mm. I didn't even understand what lessons I was being taught or being thrown mm. at that they quote unquote thought they were trying to teach me. I still had to figure it out on my own. Right. I didn't mm. learn so shit from either me, way, bitch. I learned it later. Right. Mm. So if they try to limit you, get the fuck out of there yeah. and it yep yeah, like they said if it, it takes you a little no longer go ahead yeah no, no limits yeah. no limits no other words besides trust yourself that is the only thing i trust wish yourself. that That's i listened to myself on before because i would have dreams about it my friends would tell me everyone would tell me like no i can handle it like i know i have thick skin and i did you got to have thick skin to stand yeah, under that for can't compromise so your feelings. You can't, com that you can't was compromise thing. your feelings. You can't compromise your love for yourself. You can't compromise your own morals, your beliefs, yeah. all of that. Once when somebody's trying to change, if mentoring me means changing me to think the way that you do, no. that's when I'm out of here. I don't want it. Mm. Changing that's when I'm out of here. To move like you, think like you, operate like me. you. Like I want you to enhance what I have. Teach me how to work with what, what I, I got. Yes. I don't want to dance like you. What? <laughs> You know what? I didn't know that. I didn't know that I until was I was so far deep. Because every time I danced, they said you dance facials. like this person. Do you know how many times I was told I dance like that person? I was like, what? The, what is that? And I remember going back in certain classes, and that person be like, No, you need to do it like this. I'm like, My body does not do that. Right. right. This is uncomfortable. Right. For me to dance like that, and right. then that's why I liked the other mentor that I had right after because that person encouraged me. To move the way that I knew how, but then a lot of other, a lot of, a lot lot of other shit, a lot of right? Things happen. You thought you got out of there, but now it's time no. to get it from a different place. But that was something that I appreciated because I was so girl. I don't like what is mm. this? Trust yourself, and someone should only want to be able to him. Mm -hmm. Someone should only want to work with you and what you have to offer, and pull off your strengths, right? And help you in your area of opportunity. Mentor. Like, yes. what do they see in you, and how that can they help you be you? Because I don't want to dance like Leah. I don't want to dance like Sammy. I don't want to dance like Ariane. I because we all bring something that the other cannot. Period. When we go into auditions, I know 
Aaliyah's gonna bring Aaliyah, Sammy's gonna bring Sammy, Jasmine's gonna bring Jasmine. Yeah. Even yeah, yeah, when yeah. I yes, absolutely. teach my classes, like I, I told the class, I don't care if you were dancing for six months or six years, we're all in this motherfucking class together. Period. So either humble yourself or believe in yourself even more because we're all bringing mm. something different. Come on, mentor. I, come on, period. Come I'm on. learning from you. You're learning from them. And I could see something else because, I, you know, we watch people in the class sometimes like, bitch, how you? Right. <laughs> sometimes my students be doing it better than me. Like, how you I did that like, because I did not hit my step like that at all. So where'd you get that from? Okay. It's Who class did you take that charge? I want to go to their class too. It's this fucking move for me. <laughs> Who gave you permission, bitch? To, to, <laughs> And I want that for myself. Want, it's the breakdown. Okay, break what? What's your rate? Right. <laughs> but for real, it's like I you have to get out of that mindset mm. of the comparison and thinking like you idolize this person so much, but they're also doing what works for them. Right. They are not doing what works for anybody else. They're doing what works for them. Right. Absolutely. So if they can't take their mind out of that and they're now trying to put you in a box and then let's also be very transparent if that box isn't really getting them anywhere and they're not really working. Oop. Why do you, why do you want to be in the, No, the, I'm not even yes, oop. But <laughs> I'm genuinely not trying to throw shade at anybody. This is advice that I literally got yesterday in my rehearsal for a gig that I'm on. He's mm-hmm. like, "Y'all taking these classes for people who don't do shit." Period. And he was like, "You learning the same goddamn things and you come into an audition from these working choreographers and they're like, "What the fuck is that?" Mm. Oh. Everyone on the side is like, "Hey." And he's like, "Hey, bitch, nothing. You fucking suck." I didn't cut you. You cut yourself. Oh. Because you're steady taking from people who aren't fueling you. They're doing all that they know because they stayed right here. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's real. Right. Like, that it's is not, so, yeah, that is real. It's not shade to anybody whatsoever. So don't mm-hmm. fucking come for me. Right. But right. it's like if you want to explore yourself and it goes under the same umbrella, if they're mad at you for doing other things, so now, bitch, I'm motherfucking hindered. Right. right. I'm stuck because you're not working and now I'm not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> We're not working together because you tell me what the fuck you doing, what you doing. That is very fucking, that is very What you doing ain't working true. because we in the same class, baby. <laughs> <laughs> same yeah. time. You're I'm teaching week. every week and I'm here every week, baby. <laughs> what we going to do? What we going to do? Nobody's <laughs> traveling the country. We're not doing nothing. No. No. We're here. We're, We're here. Here. Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> we rehearsing Tuesday before the class like baby same thing i've been with you all week no gigs no, no gigs. jobs no nothing gigs. shit that i want to do you don't even know about anymore <laughs> <laughs> no it is so true Fuck. so when you choose when you choose whoever you're going to spend the most of most of your time with or training under or whatever do you they do align with you, you definitely <laughs> got to look at that do they have the things that you're that you want mm. as your goals <laughs> are they are they still growing are they still you know what i'm saying but if they're in the same Little same thing. old box, Aww. but that's also they might be lear- they might be missing a lot of information that you are going to want in the future. So go look for it. But it's no shade because there are some people who are like, I want social media clout. I want to do these classes. I want to do these things, and that's all they want to do. So yes, take those people. Yeah. But if you want to, yeah, if you want all you that, know, find them, and that's maybe a, a once in a two month workshop when you can yeah mm-hmm. study their shit on youtube you can have a, a little virtual mentor <laughs> a little virtual <laughs> mentor. a little unspoken mentor study their stuff like don't go to the people that you just think right are gonna do it see what aligns with you and what you want to do in and your bitch career. use your just use your fucking resources yes. how about that i'm gonna study i'm gonna go to jazz class for that then I'm going to go to Sammy's class for that. Then I'm going to go to Leah's class for that. Then I'm going to look and do my virtual situation for this. Then I'm going to go to fucking India and go. Bye. Then, you know what I'm saying? But for real. Use your resources. Invest who said, in yourself. Who said you invest in yourself? Who said that you can only have one mentor, only one teacher, bitch? That's no why way. in school oh. we literally had like fucking eight teachers. 87 teachers, teachers a day, yeah. bitch. Thanks. Period. Or one teacher would really teach the whole as, grade. And it's just as simple as that. If I don't like what Aaliyah has to say, if mm. I don't, if I don't, you know, if I if it doesn't match well, then I'm gonna go to Sammy. And it's okay. And it's okay. I don't like what Sammy has to say. I'm gonna go to Dad. I don't like what she has to say. Right. That's why you have all of these different options. You do what you have to do for you, period. And you just make sure that you are that your feelings are not compromised, your beliefs are not compromised. Mm. Who you are and what you were made for and your nature is not compromise Period. for yeah. anybody Period. for any money for any price for any number for any clout for anything you just make sure that that's not compromised you just make sure that you feel good doing it make sure you don't take the fun away from what you fucking love to do right yep. the minute you start to feel like dance is like not fun anymore just because of who you're training with or whatever craft karate martial whatever that is it's not fun anymore you're not meant to be there and that's what we should, that I wish we had, I wish we knew that. I wish all of us knew that before. 
of course, every every downfall, you know, is a is that what is it? Every downfall is a up, uprise, something Uprising. like that. Yeah, you know, there's always any anything that we go through is a learning experience. So I'm not gonna, I wouldn't take I that wouldn't away. I, yeah, I, we wouldn't trade it for the world. We wouldn't take that away. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying it could be avoided. We could have been doing greater oh. things a little bit that earlier. Time. A little bit earlier. Okay, before a bitch was fucking twenty seven or some shit. Yeah, <laughs> right. But anyways, I want you guys to sit with that. This is really great information. I feel like this is this could really, really pave the way for an amazing journey that you guys are just now beginning. And we're still very much on our journeys, too. We have not. We're not even close nope. to the end. We're still learning right along with y'all, like you said. I don't care. I don't care if y'all have lived for 50 years. I don't care if this is your fifth year. We all live in together at the same time. I love so that. take that with you and we'll see you guys next week Woo. on After Class of Queens podcast. This was a this queen was podcast, bitch.